Howdy! Welcome to the first devlog for Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum. It's a game about hacking computers, shooting folks, and becoming the ultimate cybernetic corporate agent. Whoa. From the start of this project, I wanted character customization and build crafting to be major components of the experience. I mean, who doesn't want to make their very own special boy? I know I do. In Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum, the player's weapon represents a huge portion of their character's identity, along with the equipment, skills, and perks they bring along the way. I wanted to provide the player with plenty of options when choosing their firearm, but I didn't want to make hundreds of weapons by hand. Instead, I decided to procedurally generate them, have the game create random weapons so I don't have to. In this video, I'll talk about how guns in DDS are procedurally generated, and how they operate a little differently from those in your typical top-down shooter. This process can actually be way simpler than you might expect. Procedural generation in this case just has us taking a bunch of numbers describing how the gun operates and randomizing them around. My goal was to create weapons that feel satisfying to use, but also behave differently from one another beyond how much damage they do. The first step is listing all the characteristics of a weapon we want to randomize. This is what I came up with, but I encourage you to make your own. If you're making a survival game, maybe weapon durability could be an additional characteristic. Want to add a jamming mechanic? Add the chance of that happening to this list as well. For each item on this list, the gun will generate a random numeric value. These values will collectively determine how the gun operates. I am hoping that most of the things on this list are self-explanatory, but I want to go over a few of them in detail. Damage decides how hard each shot hits. I originally wasn't going to include this, and instead make every projectile a one-hit kill. The Borderlands games also generate their weapons, but outside of the sniper, shotgun, handgun, SMG archetypes, they don't really feel that different to use in my opinion. Damage per second is the main thing you're going to be looking at when choosing between guns in that game, and this wide range of generated damage values leads to a lot of weapons feeling weak and unsatisfying to use. This is why I initially wanted to drop damage values from my game altogether. I didn't want weapons being generated with unsatisfyingly low damage. Unfortunately, getting rid of projectile damage limits other aspects of character customization. Character builds involving self-healing can't really exist in a game like Hotline Miami where you die in one hit. There's nothing to heal. I decided to compromise by randomizing damage, but always keeping it pretty high. In Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum, you're going to die in one, two, or maybe three hits depending on how you build your character. That way, the player and enemies can spec for tanking shots or healing builds, but guns will never feel too sucky in the damage department. Let's move on. Projectile count controls how many projectiles come out of the gun per pull of the trigger. After every parameter is randomized, the rate of fire is penalized based on the projectile count. This leads to an emergent shotgun archetype. I'll talk a little bit more about this idea of parameter interdependence when we go over the proc gen algorithm itself. Ammo type decides what comes out of the gun. These are assigned to the weapon from a list that includes things like seeking rounds, rockets, railgun rods, and non-lethal options like the taser. We'll talk a little bit more about these later in the video as well. Lastly, I want to talk about rotation difficulty. This is probably the most unique parameter to DDS, and the one that changes gunplay the most. In almost every top-down shooter I can think of, the weapon you're holding insta-snaps to the direction of your mouse cursor or thumbstick. This isn't a bad thing, it produces precise and comfortable weapon controls. I wanted to create gunplay that felt unique, however, and decided to make guns rotate over time. The rotation also slows as they get closer to the target. This means you're better off using your mouse cursor to swing your weapon in the right direction instead of hovering it over the enemy you're targeting. This leads to unique and dynamic gameplay, where you're either timing your shots with your swings in the heat of the moment, or taking advantage of a position you prepared in advance so you don't have to wait for your weapon to swing around. Let's take a quick look at the code involved in this. Every frame, we'll call the gun's aim method. We first need to grab the rotation our gun should ultimately head towards. This is the direction we'd aim the weapon instantly in a typical top-down shooter. Next, we set the gun's rotation using quaternion.slurp, and passing our current rotation along with the target rotation we just calculated. This finds a rotation between the two we've selected, and moves it closer to the latter based on a value between 0 and 1. To get this value, we pass time.delta time, the time that's passed since the last frame, divided by the rotation difficulty. I'm really happy with how this aiming system turned out. It resulted in guns that felt unique from other games, difficult but rewarding to use, and different from one another even before pulling the trigger. With that out of the way, let's talk about how to actually generate the guns. Each gun, each gun contains a method called generate. 
Let's begin by going over the simplest implementation of this method. First, we take an integer seed so we can recreate results later if we want to. Next, we take each characteristic and randomize it between a minimum and maximum value. This is shockingly close to good enough. You'll get all sorts of crazy guns and it's definitely good enough for a prototype of the system. There's one problem with this though. Occasionally, this method will produce a gun with great stats across the board. If a player encounters a weapon like this, they have no reason to experiment with other weapons, and they'll be missing out on the fun of operating a weapon with drawbacks. Instead, I want weapons to be generated with balanced strengths and weaknesses. To do this, let's have our method create a random distribution. We make a list of random floating point values with length equal to the number of characteristics our weapon has. We then normalize this list to ensure that all the numbers add up to 1. Next, we subtract 1 over the length of the list from each element to ensure they add up to 0. This resulting list of positive and negative values represents the positives and drawbacks of our weapon. To apply this distribution to the gun, we take the randomly generated values from before and multiply them by 1 plus the corresponding random value from our distribution. I also include a sensitivity variable here. This just allows me to tweak how much the random distribution impacts each characteristic of the weapon. We'll still end up with some guns that feel better than others to use, but it prevents the creation of super weapons with great stats across the board. There's plenty else you can do to tweak this algorithm. I previously mentioned the idea of tying different characteristics together. Guns in Deadeye have their fire rate penalized by the projectile count. You could also apply this between variables like magazine size and reload speed, or fire rate and recoil. I don't use too much of this in my game. While it can make guns more balanced, it also cuts down on the variety of weapons you have available. I also adjust values based on the weapon's randomly assigned ammo type. Early on I had this problem where seeking bullets were fun to use, but incredibly frustrating to have used on you. If you ran into an enemy with seeking rounds, there was just no surviving. There was no escaping this torrent of bullets that showered down on you. To fix this, I made each ammo type override a method that modifies the gun's parameters after they've been generated. Seeking bullets severely nerf the projectile speed of a weapon so you can better kite and outrun them. We also want to generate a unique appearance for each weapon. The code for this is kind of long and tedious to work through, so I'm just going to go through the basic process with some visual aids. You'll want to start by creating the basic building blocks of your weapon. I work with Unity and just use these two sprites for the trigger, body, and magazine. Choose a color, spawn a box for the gun's main body, and scale it to a random size. Next, place a trigger and magazine box on the underside, randomizing their positions and randomizing the size of the magazine. For each position on top of the gun, spawn a box with a random height and leave about a 50% chance for no box to spawn at all. If you want to get fancy, you can place a box at the back at the bottom for the stock, and place a box at the front for the muzzle. Make sure to scale these randomly as well. That's it! We're done! It's a very simple algorithm, but it creates a nice selection of different looking guns that look really weird and wacky sometimes. It also matches the simple graphical style I'm going for. That's all for this devlog. If you like the video and want to see more like it, then consider giving me a like and subscribe. Make sure I hit the bell so YouTube can endlessly bombard you with notifications of every shitpost I make in the future. I'd like to do some other devlogs about hacking, level generation, AI, all that good stuff. You can also wishlist Deadeye Deepfake Simulacrum on Steam using the link below. I plan to release the project later this year. If you want to get in touch with me, borrow some code or some assets, then shoot me a DM on Twitter or hit me up in the Discord server linked below. That's all for now.